Thank you for joining us at Hope Lutheran Church for Worship Online on this yeah. Reformation Day. Yes, Reformation Day. That's right. 1517. Exactly right. Celebrate Martin Luther and the Reformation. And what do you think Luther would think about all this stuff today? The internet and the YouTube and all that kind of stuff. I think he'd be out trick-or-treating right now. <laughs> I think he'd be playing with Gutenberg. Oh, yeah, probably. Because, yeah. I mean, he really was the start of this whole thing. Exactly right. Yes, and the printing press. Have you seen the Gutenberg Bible, a copy of it? I have not. You have it? I've seen it twice. I, <laughs> I, I think he saw the original copy when it came out. <laughs> I was going to tell you, I, did, I, it wasn't, I was out having lunch that day. I missed it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, at, at the Sistine Chapel or at the Vatican Museum, I've seen it twice, and it's quite impressive. Wow, that is. That's really cool. Yes, well, so happy Reformation Day to all of you. Happy Halloween to all of you little ghouls and goblins out there. I hope you are having a wonderful week, and we are here to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Yes, and if you'd like to help support our ministry, there are three ways you can do so. One, you can go uh, mail in an offering to Hope Lutheran Church at 45900 Portola Avenue in Palm Desert, California, 92260. You can text again simply by texting 84321. And finally, you can go to hopepd.org, and there you'll find not only ways to give, but also all the ministry opportunities, like our Trunk or Treat that's happening here at Hope, all the different stuff that's happening. All Saints Day coming up. All Saints Day, that's right. If you have someone in your life that has died in the last year and you would like for us to remember them on All Saints Day, saying a prayer to God, thanking them for their lives, just you can email me at Derek at HopePD.org or Gabe at Gabe at HopePD.org and we will make sure to pray for them next week. That's right. That's right. And now we're going to throw it over to our legacy circle for a great announcement of ways that you can make a lasting legacy here at Hope. Today, I'd like to say a few words on behalf of the Legacy Committee of Hope Lutheran Church, Palm Desert, California. I'd like to take a moment and invite you to join our Legacy Circle. The Legacy Circle is made up of people like you who have decided to leave Hope Lutheran Church in their estate planning. Cheryl and I did that about five years ago because we are so thankful for the difference Hope Lutheran Church has made in our lives and want it to continue so people can find welcome and experience faith along long into the future here at Hope. What I'm suggesting is that when you consider your estate, why not leave 10% to Hope Lutheran Church or the charity of your choice and the rest to your heirs? Think about it. If your heirs can't live on 90% of their inheritance, what makes you think that 100% will make a difference? Remember, remember you don't have to leave 10% just to Hope Lutheran. Divide it up among the charities that made a difference in your life. Pray about it, talk it over, and then let one of the pastors know by calling the church office at 760-346-1273. That's 760-346-1273. One, two, seven, three. We'd love to add your name to our legacy circle. Do it today. Thank you, and may you continue to be a blessing to those around you. Our reading for today comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, the third chapter. Now we know whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the pre present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes a boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? 
No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you this day, O Lord. Amen. Well, as you well know, October 31st is typically celebrated as Halloween, the day children dress up in scary costumes, going door to door, trick or treating, and collecting enough candy to last them until next year, or in my boy's case, the next day. People decorate their yards with jack lanterns, ghosts, skeletons, and spiders. It's one of my son's favorite days of the year. But in the church, especially the Lutheran church, October 31st holds another meaning. It's the day we celebrate the Reformation. On this day in 1517, a relatively unknown monk and professor named Martin Luther nailed a list of 95 theses, or questions for debate, to the door of Wittenberg Cathedral in Germany. These 95 theses were questions Martin Luther had with the way the church proclaimed Jesus Christ. From what he saw, the way the church operated hardly seemed like good news. Little did Marty know that that one act would be a spark that would change the way the message of Jesus would be proclaimed forever. People would be free from the thought that there's anything we can do to earn our salvation. Free from the demands of a church that claimed to hold the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Free to believe that God's role is not to punish us for our sins, but to love us and shower us with grace and mercy and that all we have to do is receive that grace with joy and gratefulness. It was a reformation that helped the world to understand that we have a God who loves us so much that he would relentlessly pursue us no matter how much we try to run away. A God who would spend, send his only son, not for the perfect people, but for the broken. A God and a Savior that will never abandon us that will stand by our side no matter how often we fail or how short we fall. But here's the thing. The Protestant Reformation of 1517 wasn't the first time the church went through a drastic change. For the first 500 years after Jesus' death and resurrection, the Christian church went from an underground movement to the official religion of the Roman Empire, complete with a Bible, official structure, doctrines, and creeds. Roughly 500 years later, the church underwent a momental change, again with the Great Schism of 1054. The church divided into East and West, which remains today as the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church. Roughly 500 years after that was the Reformation of Martin Luther that we celebrate today. Just about every 500 years, God seems to have a garage sale with God's church getting rid of the old and revealing something new. And now, today we are living 500 years after Martin Luther nailed those theses to the cathedral doors, which should make us wonder, what is God going to do now with Christ's church? What reformation is on our horizon? What is it time for the church of Jesus to release? And what is it time for the church to reveal? There's no doubt that there are things that need to change. For too long, the church has played a role in making people feel excluded or inferior because of their gender or for whom they love. For too long, the church has stood by and stayed quiet during times of corruption and injustice. For too long, the church has failed to be a light to the world that attracts others to follow Jesus. We are living at a time when, according to the Pew Research Forum, the fastest growing religious affiliation in the U.S. is the nuns. Not N-U-N, but N-O-N-E. People who claim to have no religious affiliation whatsoever. Yes, it's time for the church to undergo another reformation. But the thing is, the church isn't a building. The church isn't a structure or a system or a denomination. The church is the people who claim to follow Jesus. People who are broken, 
lost and doing their best to live as God has called us to live. The church of Jesus Christ is you, me, and two and a half billion other people who call Jesus Christ their Savior and Lord. So imagine if the church, the people of Jesus, began living our lives, loving the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our strength, and with all our souls. Imagine if the church began living our lives as where, where we love our neighbor as ourselves. Imagine if being a Christian was more than just a label, but a way of life. What if everyone who claims to follow Jesus started to care more about the needs of others than their own self-interest? What if the church of Jesus lived our lives in a way where those who don't yet know Christ wonder how we live with so much joy, love, sacrifice, and grace? Can you imagine what kind of reformation that would be? Yes, through the work of the Holy Spirit, the church, the people of Christ are constantly being reformed. All things are being made new. And you are a part of that. Isn't that exciting? God is using you not just to reform the church, but to reform the world. That's better than any bag full of candy. The reason we can be the reforming work of Christ in the world is because we have been set free in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Free to choose life over death as we received in the moment of new life and baptism. Free to know that God created each one of us to be loved beyond measure. That each human life is equally powerful and ordained by God. And knowing that the greatest exercise of Christian freedom is to serve one another. Free to make this world more and more like the kingdom of heaven in big ways and small. Not because we need to in order to earn God's love, but rather because we get to because God loves you. So I pray that you may be the reformation in the world, that you will go out and reform your life and the lives of others by sharing God's love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness. And in doing so, reform not only the church, but the world for Jesus Christ, because you can make a difference. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the reformation that happened 500 years ago. And Lord, we give you thanks for the reformation that is happening now. May we go out and make a difference in the world for your kingdom this day and always. All this we pray in your holy and precious name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us again for worship. And I would like to ask you to do something. If you could like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, it helps us reach more people with the good news of Jesus Christ and continue that reformation.
thank you also for those of you who have been giving financially. Your giving makes a difference in the world, and that's what we are about here at Hope, making a difference. So if you'd like to contribute, there are three ways you can do so. One, you can mail in an offering to Hope Lutheran Church at 45900 Portola Avenue in Palm Desert, California, 92260. You can text to give simply by taking out your smartphone and texting 84321. And finally, you can go to hopepd.org. There you'll find not only ways to give, but all of the things that are happening here at Hope. So go to hopepd.org today. Now let us continue our worship as we confess our faith found in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And as we are gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, no matter where we are, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now, receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant to you his everlasting peace. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to not only love and serve our Lord, but to make a difference for his kingdom. Thanks be to God. Amen.